Hey guys, it's Gio from Smart Home Makers. In this video, I'm going to show you how you can set up a DIY home intruder alert system with a camera and home assistant and a mobile phone. In this tutorial, I'll show you how you can set up a snapshot image right onto your phone, a live camera stream, and also a way of silencing an alarm if you've got an alarm system. Now, I set up another video where I set up my DIY alarm system, but you can use any alarm system you integrate into Home Assistant to do this project. <laughs> The first thing we need to do is we need to create a folder in Home Assistant to store the images from the camera. I'll be using the www folder so I can expose it in a notification later on. So go to your file editor, navigate to www. If you haven't got that folder, just create it. There's a button here on the top, new folder, and create the photos folder as you can see it here. Now let's go back into the configuration.yaml file. And what we need to do is we need to whitelist the external directory. So I would whitelist config slash www slash photos. Now you can call this whatever name you want to call it, but you just need to adjust this code here. And remember the whitelisting code needs to be included under the home assistant. So be careful with your indentation. Now at this stage, you can restart home assistant and let's move on to the next phase. So if you've just received a notification that your alarm has been triggered, you actually want to know from your camera if it's a false alarm or not. So one thing you can do is you can create a snapshot of the image, store that in the folder that we just created, and then you can get that image and send it to your phone and it will appear as a notification. I'll show you how you can do that now. I'm in my automations file now, and I'm gonna create a new file for you uh, to guide you through this process. So click on new file, and I'm going to call it camera alarm.yaml. Now, let's start from the basics. The basic, uh, we're going to need an alias, and the alias is going to give us some information around what this automation does. So I'm going to say send notification uh, when alarm is triggered in the kitchen. Fantastic, so the trigger point we are going to use, we're going to use the platform state and we will look at the specific entity ID, our binary sensor. So this is the sensor that's in the room that you need to trigger. So for example, you're going to have one sensor in one room with a camera. You can use the camera itself as a sensor if you're using another motion sensor anyway as part of your alarm system then you can reuse it as part of this automation so i'm going to use the kitchen kitchen motion sensor and i want the motion sensor to be turned on that's my trigger point in terms of the condition i only want this to happen when the alarm is in triggered mode so our condition is the condition state entity id is alarm control. So this is going to be your own alarm control panel. And my state is triggered. This is the part where we could actually send the action now. So in terms of the action, now before we do this, you need to have your notifications working on your mobile phone. You need to have that set up. If you know how to do that, that's fantastic. If you don't, remember you need to have a default in your configuration.yaml file and iOS for iOS devices. Now, I'll be using this service called camera.snapshot and I'm going to use this data and I'm going to pass a few things. I'm going to pass an entity ID. So here you'll put in your, uh, your own camera and in terms of the file name, now this is the location of where your actual snapshot is going to be located. So I'm going to save it under config www uh, photos and my one's going to be UVC G3 Dome because that's the name of the camera and I'm using JPEG. Now you can use templates to for example um, call uh, like a timestamp so you can have multiple files but because this is exposed publicly i only want to have the one the last one left but you can change this configuration so you can put it and you can store 
and number of images you want to store. What I'll do now is I'm going to give this a save uh, just in case. So at this stage, we'll, this will just create the actual uh, snapshot in the image without the notification itself. So I'm actually going to use a different camera just for uh, simplicity and for the demo purposes. So I'm going to be using the UVC Flex. I'm just going to change this to UVC Flex and reload automations. Now, if I if you go to the configuration tab, you can actually go to your automations and you can test them. And this is sort of the best way of doing it without actually moving from your desk while you're um, you know trying things out. So this is my my one here. And if I execute this, then what I should be able to do is I've had had an image here already previously. If I go to the file editor. And now let's see if it's actually updated. Yeah, so now we've got our second file and we've got a UVC flex. And if you open it up, you can see a, an image here from the camera. So if this was a, uh, in case with here, we've got a cat. And um, you know, if this cat was like an intruder, then you, we, would, uh, we would have a photo of them. Well, at least it would be stored in Home Assistant, but that's not really useful because if you're not away, you want to have that on your phone. So let's add it into our notifications now. So we're back in the same file as before and we're going to add here. So be careful, only two spaces and we're going to add another service. And in this example, we're going to use Notify. And we're going to say Notify Mobile App is our uh, service. So this part will be always the same. And then you'll need to put your own part. So you're going to need to put your own um, name, the name of your device that you want to notify. So my example is Giordano S iPhone 7. Fantastic. So I'll go data and then double space again, message. And I'm putting some text here. So we can say there is motion in the kitchen, for example. Now we need to pass data again. And this exam and, and this time we're going to uh, pass in the attachment. So if we do attachment, I think that's spelled properly. And double. So every time you space out, it's always two, two spaces, right? When we indenting. So URL. And this one is going to be specific to your own example. So you're going to put your uh, your URL and this needs to be an external URL. For example, like an Abu Kaza or an externally accessible URL of your home assistant instance. And then you'll then put slash local slash photos slash and then the name of the file. My example, UVC flex dot JPEG. So that will be sort of the, the location of the file. So because of the, uh, for obvious reasons, I'm not gonna put in my uh, my full location, but the location will go here. So for example, be your server name, and it will be in the format of HTTPS slash slash, okay? All right, so let me show you the everything else. So content type, and this is a JPEG, JPEG file. We're going to disable the hide thumbnail because we want to show the thumbnail. And I think that's it. So let me clear this space out. I'm going to save this out and reload, reload automations when you're ready. Now I'm going to add in my uh, URL in here and I'll reload automations. So now we want to add in a stream into our notification. We also want an option to silence the alarm just in case the, it was a false alarm. So I'll show you how you can do that. Let's go to our configuration.yaml file and we're going to need to create a push category first. If you've done actionable notifications before in Home Assistant, then you'll be quite familiar with this part. If you haven't, I just follow through and I'll show you what you can do. So this is the part that I'm going to be using today the camera with actions and my identifier is going to be camera and my uh, button will be silence alarm 
and as you can see if you just copy and paste this from the blog then this should work exactly uh, in the same way that it's going to work for me as I'm going to show you right now. Remember that if you don't have this part here you need to ensure that you have still have these lines of code so it will be basically without this part uh, and that should basically all work. Now remember this case not just restart has you could have to restart the whole server getting value at this video as usual like and subscribe i'm trying to reach 1000 subscribers by the end of the year let's do it the code in the tutorial you'll find in my blog you can google leonardo smart home makers or there's a link down in the description below but if you google it you'll help me out with the google algorithm so let's go through the app now after that you've rebooted and let's check if the actual notifications actually come through this is a very important step because without this it's not going to work Go to your Home Assistant panel and go to App Configurations. Then you scroll down and you have find Notifications. You tap on that. And then you should see your synced categories and you will have Camera with Actions and uh, in my example I will have Message but you don't need that because that was for a different automation. So let's now go back into Home Assistant to create our automation to silence the alarm and also to trigger this button. In your YAML file in the automations, now let's add a couple of lines of code. We're going to add push, category camera, and the entity ID of the camera. Now this category camera is the identifier of the actual notification. And that's it. So once that is done, go and reload your automations as usual. Right, so now we're going to make that button do actually something. So go to your automations file and open up a new automation, create a new file. And this is what we're going to need to create. First of all, alias silence alarm. In our trigger, we'll be using the platform event and we're using something that's specific to iOS, but there is an Android equivalent. I'll link a um, the documentation down in the description below. Uh, so we're using iOS.notification action fired. The event data is the action name, silence, underscore, alarm, all in, in uh, uppercase. And that's you have to type that in exactly right in the same way. Action with the name with the sort of capital N. And this needs to be the action name that was configured in the configuration at YAML. Perfect. So now the action. This action is going to disarm the alarm for us. Now you could potentially set the alarm back into arm, arm home or arm away, depending on what you want to do. In my example, I'm just going to disarm it because if I silenced it, I'm, I'm happy to say that there is a false alarm. So pass a few things. So the alarm control panel dot alarm disarm. If you want to find out different type of actions you can take in the alarm control panel, you can go to the developers tool and you can go to services and you can scroll and you can find the different types but well, basically they are uh, arm disarm trigger alarm back to us and the last thing the important thing is the code so to disarm you're going to need a code and the code is your secret alarm underscore code so save that reload your automations now we can test the whole thing working the initial stage we have our alarm non-triggered and non-armed so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to the developer tool, I'm going to states and I'm going to trigger this alarm. As you can see now it's disarmed. So if I set the state as triggered, as you can see here, now this goes into the triggered mode. So it will go through all, do all of your automation. So be careful because this will do many things unless you've disabled them. Now you can see the alarm panel going into sort of a, an alarm state. And now we can test our uh, automation. So presumably there will be a motion in the kitchen. So when there's motion in the kitchen, then at that stage, we will uh, send out the uh, notification. So let's ex execute this uh, notification. We should uh, get uh, one on, the, on my mobile phone right now. So as you can see, I got my alarm notification, oops. I got my alarm notification first and then I got the second one with this camera stream. So if I can open it, I can see the camera stream and my silence alarm button, tap here and I can send 
I can send some text if I wanted to use text to speech, for example, but it doesn't matter what you send. Put a thing that you type silence and let's go go here. Now important thing you're gonna to need to authenticate. It's not gonna work without authenticating, unlocking your phone and in it and it did it, right? So it's quite important that you have it that it only works if you authenticate your phone. If not, if someone ha you know sees your phone, there's an alarm trigger, they can just silence it from there without even you knowing. You know, if your phone, for example, is at home while uh, a burglar's inside. Now, if you want to test this end to end, you can actually do this one step further. You can trigger the uh, even the initial automation through the binary sensor kitchen underscore motion sensor. So at the moment it's off. And if you were to set this as on, but it also you'll have the, um, the alarm panel will need to be triggered. So let's try that out right now. So first of all, let me do the alarm trigger first. I'm gonna set this to triggered. Yep, and then check it. Yeah, I've got the message, and then looking for my binary sensor kitchen motion sensor. I'm gonna change this to on, set state. Now we've had motion, and we've had so we have the two parameters, and as you can see now, we got our we got our notification, eh, all set. And we have our silence. So let me go back here again. And we can just do silence, text, random text, silence, authenticate, and we're done. I have many other videos for you. And if you wanna see how I've actually set up this DIY alarm panel myself, I'm going to link the video to that, but also feel free to subscribe. There's many more content coming up. Stay safe and let's keep in touch.